Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at how to prevent duplicate data in Salesforce. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on this video if you find it useful. Uh, I have plenty of Salesforce content already uploaded and I'm putting out new videos every week. So without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and jump into it. So within Salesforce, they do provide some duplicate management tools, uh, whether that's for account or contact and a couple other objects. And you can set up rules to help prevent duplicate data. To uh, set up our first duplicate rule in Salesforce, you're going to need to be in setup. You're going to go to the quick find. You're going to type duplicate. Now, you have a couple of different uh, sections here. You have duplicate error logs. You have duplicate rules and matching rules. We're actually just going to go ahead into duplicate rules. Whenever you get to this screen, there's actually already two built-in rules here. These are the two standard rules that come built with uh, your sandbox. They're probably in your org at work if you are in a work environment as well. They're a standard rule for contacts with duplicate read leads and standard rule for leads with duplicate contacts. We're going to go ahead and create a new rule. Now, here's the objects that are supported by the duplicate rules. You have account, contact, individual, and lead. So for this exercise, we're going to set up a duplicate rule on an account. All right, so we're going to go ahead and enter our rule name, and we're going to call this uh, duplicate uh, account management. Uh, we'll just call it duplicate account. Make it shorter. You can add a description would be a good idea. So you have this record level security. If you hover over the eye, I'll tell you more about it. Uh, but the like, what you need to know is if it's going to enforce the sharing rule, uh, the matching rule uh, compares only records that the user has access to, and the resulting list of possible duplicates includes only records the user has access to. The bypass rule is the matching rule compares all records regardless of user access but the resulting list of possible duplicates include only records the user has access to. Uh, for our situ situation, we're going to set up and force uh, sharing rules. All right, so we have actions here. So we have action on create. And now on the drop down, you have allow or block. And then action on edit, allow or block. So for this duplicate rule, we are going to change this allow to block. And on edit, we're not going to uh, have this duplicate rule do anything on editing. So our scenario is we have users creating new accounts. Whenever you create a new account, we don't want a duplicate created there. You would get an error message and you would utilize the existing account. Uh, I don't really care if you go in and edit it and change it in my scenario in your org. Um, if you're working for an organization, they may have uh, different requirements and want you to set it up on edit as well. So this is the alert text. It says use one of these records. You can change this to whatever you like, and it'll even tell you here. It says tell users why they can't save the record and what you'd like them to do. All right, matching rules. So the reason I said we're just going to go into duplicate rules is you have to have a matching rule for your duplicate rule. So looking here, we have the compare accounts uh, with uh, account, and it has this standard account matching rule. We're going to hit this drop down, and you can actually create a new matching rule from this drop down. So it says, create a new match rule, save your duplicate rule, and we'll redirect you to create your new matching rule. I'm okay with that. All right, so we're in here looking at the matching rule. This is called, uh, kind of has like object, rule name, duplicate account matching. So this is the matching criteria. So this is pretty interesting. So we're going to tell the rule which field to compare and how. So let's see what field. Now I kind of already know um, a couple of them I want to set. I want to set the account name. Now Salesforce has fuzzy company name or exact. So what fuzzy company name is, Salesforce uses its best judgment and fuzzy matches the name uh, even if it's not exactly right. So uh, the account we're going to use is, uh, as our example is Express Logistics and Company, I believe. So it is Express Logistics and A-N-D, but if you use Fuzzy Match and use an ampersand instead of and, it will pick it up as a duplicate. Now, if you have exact, it has to be exactly the same, even with the spacing, I believe. 
and it's not as useful in my opinion. Uh, now for phone numbers, that is very useful, but for an account name, I like the fuzzy company name. And what does this say here? If you select this option for any field and that field is blank and both the records being compared, the fields are considered matches. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Then I want to do the phone number as well. I don't want that to be exactly. Now, if you look over here to the right, what it's saying is the account name and the phone number have to match before this matching rule will uh, fire our duplicate management or duplicate rule. So we need to add filter logic in here. So right now it's set up for one and two. I'm actually going to change this to or. So now either one of these uh, has to be true for it to work or it could be both, uh, but it'll fire for just one of them. So now I'm going to come down to the right and hit save. So now we have created our first matching rule called duplicate account matching rule. So I'm going to go back Oh, and it's currently inactive, which I'm going to go ahead and activate this. Now I'm going to go back to this duplicate rule. Now you can see the one I just created here. So matching rule is here and it's mapped. I'm going to hit edit real quick. So optionally, you can specify conditions a record must meet for the rule to run. So I'll just click the drop down. So you could set it up for a current user's profile. It has to equal something. Maybe it's only for um, marketing users if you have a, a uh, profile called that or user role or someone in a billing city. You can see um, like current user, first name. You can set this up in a myriad of different ways and it's highly customizable which is very nice uh, but in our test case scenario we're not going to be using this i just really wanted to show you how you could customize this further uh, you can even i mean this has got a little bit of everything here right so um, i'm just going to hit cancel because i'm not making any changes and i'm going to activate this duplicate rule all right perfect so now our duplicate account rule is set up all right, we're going to go over here to our other tab. This is the account I was talking about earlier, but we're going to go in and we are going to create a new account. So now remember, it's going to check the account name and phone number. So I'm going to type in the exact same account name as Express Logistics here. Express Logistics and Transport. Now, as soon as I click out of this cell, it should trigger our uh, duplicate rule. And look at that, right at the bottom, we hit a snag. You can't save these records because a duplicate record already exists. To save, use different information. So we'll view duplicates in a second. So I wanted to show you something else here. So if I take this out and I click somewhere else, our duplicate rule unchecks itself because there's nothing in that field that's triggering the rule anymore. So now, even if I do express uh, logistics. Let's see if it picks it up. Yep. So even with the ampersand, it still picks it up as a possible duplicate because of the fuzzy match. Now, I don't happen to have uh, the phone number for this account or one of my accounts here. So I'm going to have to open up another tab here and go into that account and grab the phone number. So this is the phone number here. So we're going to grab this and we're going to plug this into our phone category. Now let's click out of this. Look at that. Our uh, duplicate rule triggered and it's saying, hey, there's some duplicates. Now, what's interesting is this is an exact match. So if you take this dash out and you click down here, it's going to reevaluate your rule and it's going to go away. It's going to let that go. That's what I'm talking about with the exact matches. You have to be careful because if I add that dash back in, it's going to trigger our rule. So we're going to hit view duplicates. So this is pretty cool. I like how it opens up here and it's telling you, hey, this, this looks like the duplicate here. Uh, please use this account. So you can open this account from this screen and it takes you straight to the Express Logistics and Transport account. This is super cool. I, uh, I've, we use duplicate rules in our, uh, org at my work. They're very helpful and it helps prevent a lot of dirty data.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more Salesforce content, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. I have new videos coming out all the time. I really appreciate your taking your time to watch my video, and I will see you in the next one.